uh, anyway, I do have some news to report, and I think uh, timing is everything. I asked Lindsay to come on, Lindsay Ray from Raymond James, to come give us a little update. You know, we pulled the trigger on uh, uh, $14 million uh, worth of bond, and the timing is everything. And Lindsay, why don't you give us the, the good news? Um, thank you for having us here today. I just wanted to say congratulations um, again. The timing, as the mayor mentioned, was, can you hear me? Um, timing was perfect. So as you all are probably aware, interest rates are rising, and we were able to lock in a 2.75% on this bond issue for 20 years, which if we were to lock in today, that rate would probably be between 350 to 375. So tremendous outcome. Um, you really hit the timing right, and we're looking forward to seeing the outcome of the projects and just appreciate the opportunity to serve the city of Biloxi. Well, great. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank to our A team, Jason and, and Jane. So uh, it took, you know, took the whole gang to put it together. So we're ready to pull the trigger on some good projects that we outlined, and, and uh, we'll move forward. So thanks again. Appreciate all y'all. Thank you. So I got a question. What does that three quarter of a point mean? About a, How much? One hundred fifty thousand a year, I think, on debt service. Don't you think? That's great. Yes. Sir. How much? One hundred fifty thousand a year. One hundred fifty thousand a year. Time twenty years. So. Pretty good nickel. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks yes, again. Thank you. And that's also a big testament. I know I've said this before to the council, but the city of Biloxi's credit um, goes a long way in also getting that interest rate. So thank you for what you do to keep your finances in order and be good stewards to the city. Great. Thank Thanks you. again. And that concludes my report. All right. We'll move to council reports. Mr. Lawrence. I'd like to uh, welcome all the uh, citizens, oh, taxpayers, homeowners, neighborhoods. You have the right to come and speak in front of the council, and I hope we treat you all with a lot of respect and listen to you all's concerns. Thank you all for being here. No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Garns? No report. Thank you. Ms. Newman? Mr. Tisdale? Uh, yes, a couple of things. Have we given any more thought to a city job fair? I know we have a lot of vacancies in the city, particularly in public works, and it's a grass growing season. Right. It, it is. And we, we actually set up some things where we can address from contractual services that need. It's coming up. You can drive the beach and see our need as far as trash and, and all those kinds of things. But uh, again, uh, we've, we publicized we're hiring. And uh, I know in, in the PD and in, in public works, there's uh, there's some progress being made. I think we've got a few people chief in the, in the, the uh, academy at this point in time, but uh, we're we're trying to staff up. So we'll address uh, you know the job fair seems to be uh, an opportunity. We'll, we'll move forward with that. Also, I know we're still looking for an engineering director. We've been without one. I know Mr. Leonard's kind of filling in that position, but I we're think. There's an, ordinance, there's an ordinance, though, that requires that positions be filled with interim directors, and I'm assuming that's right. Mr. Leonard's role, but, but they can't be done forever. I mean, I think that's for a six-month period, and we're well past that. It, well, I think we got two candidates, and uh, uh, both, I think, are uh, very close. So we'll have, you know, in, in a number of days, that position. I'll ask you next month. Do that. All right. Um, West Biloxi Library, some, somebody called me uh, that lives in my ward and wanted to know about the, the repairs to the air conditioning unit. Apparently, patrons of the library just go, they order books online, go in and pick up the books, but I'm thinking you can't go in and browse the books, and it seems the air conditioning, from what I gathered from my conversation, is the issue, and I know we're responsible for that facility. So if somebody would check on that and see if we could get that done it's just folks ought to be able to go into the library and look and see what's you know all that good stuff but I'll uh, check on that. I'll, and i'll ask about it next week as well uh that that concludes my my questions and comments today <laughs> thank you thank you mr tisdale mr barrett uh only thing that i have is i'd like to let everyone know we're going to be having a movie night in eagle point park on may 27th i believe at um 6 p.m. Uh, so I'd like to invite everyone out to that. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Um, one issue I have under my report, I'd like to charge the administration uh, to consider creating a review district on the former industrial um, park known as uh, Biloxi Commerce Park. Uh, there are some uh, reviews or uh, uh, some design standards that may have expired 
And if we could pick that up and create a review district and maybe incorporate some of those to preserve um, the development in that uh, park, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. Will do. And that concludes my report. We'll move on to the policy agenda. Item A. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm skipping citizens' comments. Y'all want to wait or <laughs> y'all want to go now? I think they said now. Uh, citizens' comments, I, I want to remind everyone we have 45 minutes. Uh, each person that comes up to uh, talk, you must print your name on the sheet up here and state your name and address for the record. Uh, you'll have three minutes when the bell rings, your time's over. We've got a full house tonight, and I want to get everybody in in that 45 minutes that I can. So we'll start on my left, your right. Just raise your hand, you'll be recognized. Anyone on my left, your right. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Gilbert Ramsey. I'm a military veterans innovation outreach specialist. I'm here to introduce a sponsorship to utilize the Civic Center. And using the Civic Center, I'm coming in as a non government official public private partnership agreement, stewardship program, and with the University of Southern Mississippi Independent Disability Studies, Blue Economy and Quality of Life Fishing, Amenities for Loved Ones and Caretakers, Therapeutic Therapy. Fishing tournaments not on shore or pier. Take them out front and get them on the islands. Let them enjoy the island's disabled community with track wheelchairs. Economic development, workforce development, retain the students, hire learning education, Mississippi Development Rehabilitation Service, hire heroes and spouses, United States Chamber, talent services, and ranch, horseback riding, all train vehicles, hunting club for unconditioned citizens, Opportunities, Bill 606 Stewardship, Eric Sparks, Mississippi State Entertainment Services, Master Naturalist Program, Director, Agricultural Organic Gardening to Feed the Homeless. And what I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen, I have a BP contract I've been working on since 2013. I'll be at City Council in Diablville introducing it, my hometown. We have this opportunity to do commercialization with the United States. They waited on me with the Red Cross Initiative. And I'm coming in with the University of Southern Mississippi Innovation Team with Blue Economy. They're waiting on me, Miss um, Natalie Guess and Miss Laura Jugan, Stennis Space Center. We have done this association appropriately and the community implemented appropriately with Veterans Bottled Water Company as well. The Veteran Bottled Water Company would donate houses, caskets, and dormitories with proceeds. He's a retired Army Ranger. I'm telling you this for a reason. We're doing commercials and everything to introduce internationally. He is my, my friend. He's medical media at the VA. He's offered me his assistance to do the production with the commercials. I have this associated in my heart and my head. I'm buying 80 acres north of Ocean Springs. I'm coming into town with water parks for wheelchairs. I'm having this implemented with amenities for loved ones and caretakers. Take our disabled community to the islands. I have y'all's attention now. I have this associated appropriately for everyone's best interest. Step up to the plate. Let's hit a home run together. I love each and every one of y'all. It's called 153 Fishing Team in Finney, John 21. 153 Fishing Team, Infinite John 21. Look at that in your Bible. 153 is the amount of fish Jesus caught with Peter. Look at that. I love you and stay safe. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Anyone else on this side? Come on up.
Good afternoon. My name is Martha Hunt Tripp, and I live at 132 Jefferson Davis Avenue. I've lived in this neighborhood for 71 years, and I consider my neighborhood from Arborville to White Avenue. I'm here to oppose the one, there's several things on your agenda today that I'm opposed to, and several people here today are opposed to it. The first one I'm opposed to is the one, 119 St. George, formerly 1501 Avalon Street short-term rental. And the other one I'm against is the zoning again, rezoning, zoning map amendment regarding the Cayman Brack subdivision and the medium density single family bed and breakfast on Sweatman Street. I am representing several of the people in the audience that will not speak today. Would you, could these people please stand up that are against all these? These are the neighbors that live in this neighborhood. Our neighborhood is pretty big and we're pretty active lately. We've really gotten very active. Some of these people will follow me after I have spoken. I understand anything on Highway 90 is considered short-term rental. I also understand and remember that the Avalon Hotel was on, on the property, which is, which is now 119 St. George. But 119 St. George is not on Highway 90. I want to thank the City Council. You already denied this short-term rental January the 4th, 2022. I understand Mr. McDonald has made uh, some very good um, improvements, making the parking lot bigger and putting up a fence. I'm, a sh I'm against short-term rental in the neighborhood because I've experienced it on my street on Jeff Davis. The owner came from Texas, and I've told you this story. They advertised sleeps 19 people. The next time we had nine SUVs parked in the yard on our street. People do not know what we didn't know walked up and down the street. The man next door was very afraid. He called Mr. Lawrence and it was shut down. I don't want that to happen to Sid, Trilby, and Teresa who live behind 119 St. George. Now, my concern about changing the medium density single family residential to low density in the Cayman Brack parking area, and that's what they want to do is because this did come before the Planning Commission and I was there and the Planning Commission denied it. But I do understand you have the final say. But they were going to have extended parking or you could build a duplex or a triplex. If the owners decide to sell this property, then later on, is that my ding ding? That was it? Your time's okay. up. All right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Another Tripp. thing. I I'm going to leave you with this. Another problem is Iberville. They want to turn off on that street, and it's a very busy street. Why? Because thank you, Ms. White Tripp. Avenue's closed. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very much. I appreciate you. Good afternoon. My name's George Burdrow. Uh, Ms. Hunt Tripp probably presented it as eloquently as I can. Um, the Planning Commission sent you a recommendation to decline the zoning change on Glen Sweatman Street. For all the reasons that everybody can say, we're concerned about traffic and parking and all of those things. It's a neighborhood that's never had short-term rentals, should not have short-term rentals. And it's not only about the neighborhood, but if you were just to take that piece of property which is bordered on the north by Glen Sweatman, but Glen Sweatman does not go all the way through to Iberville Drive. So let's just say on the north it's Glen Sweatman, on the east it's Miramar, on the south it's Highway 90, and on the west it's Iberville Drive. There are approximately 12 to 15 other houses on that quadrant that don't deserve to have a short-term rental an Airbnb, a bed and breakfast, it just simply opens up a can of worms. There are a lot of people that are going to stand up behind me and I guess they're going to say something. Martha, you did a great job of getting all those folks to stand up. But there are people that are going to speak against this and I'm against it 
And even if you said, well, let's just look at that quadrant where that house is located, it's got to be a six or seven bedroom house. There are other single family houses on that quadrant. It's about the neighborhood, but you can look at that quadrant, you can look at that house. It's just simply not the right thing for our neighborhood, and it's not the right thing for the city of Biloxi. I didn't know about the issue on St. George, but I would certainly be opposed to that too, because once again, it sets a horrible precedent for people to come in. Some people across the street from me have spent an inordinate amount of money on a house. They've spent $300,000 on a $200,000 house. They thought they were gonna make it a short-term rental. So if you approve this, it opens the door for them to come in and say, well, wait, you've set a precedent. Right down the street, we have a short-term rental. I'm opposed to any of that. I'm opposed to rezoning. I'm opposed to Airbnbs in the wrong place. And I'm opposed to bed and breakfast in the wrong place. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Ma'am, you're next. My name is Beverly Hammond, and my husband and I live at 148 Acacia, and we've lived there for the past 60 years. The reason we originally purchased a home on this street was because it was one of the finest neighborhoods in West Biloxi. Everything was convenient, elementary school, junior high, high school, all within riding, uh, bicycle riding distance. Bonds were formed at these schools between the neighborhood children, and they still exist today. Here's evidence of what a real neighborhood should look like. At Christmas, the neighbors celebrate a potluck party, at which time the entire families attend. This was begun back in the 60s and has been going all this time, where now Families with four generations come. Children exchange gifts, sing carols, and adults exchange gifts. On the 4th of July, there's a huge celebration of families in our neighborhood again, potluck. Everyone can swim. For the children, we have egg toss, three-legged races, water balloon toss. The dinner always begins with the Pledge of Allegiance and ends with homemade ice cream. At Mardi Gras, we come together to watch the parade and have potluck meals again. In either May or October, we have an annual neighborhood garage sale. In the fall, we take what we call a walk in the neighborhood. When neighbors who have recently remodeled their homes invite us in to see what they have done and share in the excitement. Um, <clears throat> Even after the disaster wrought by Katrina, many families rebuilt because they wanted to live in a real neighborhood, not in a gated community or subdivision, not in a, col a condo or an apartment, but in a real neighborhood. This is what our historic neighborhood looks like. These are the facts, and, these, and those who say decisions of this council will be made with the facts here they are, wrapped in emotions. These emotional neighbors are here today. You saw them stand up. But recently it appears that the city is trying to ruin neighborhoods like mine by rezoning property for such things as short-term rentals, Airbnbs, bed and breakfast, all commercial endeavors. It has been brought to our attention that this is happening again at 1611 Swetman Street. We are here to voice our op opposition to this zoning for both the house and the adjoining property because 1611 is definitely not on the beach. Last time I looked, the front door was still on Glenn Swetman. I'm sorry, your time's up. You to please your, decline. Your time's up, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, you're good. Anyway, again, we're asking you to decline. 
Okay, anyone else on this side? Yes, ma'am. My name is Linda Giardelli, and I live at 169 Miramar Avenue, and I've lived there for probably over 25 years. And everything they said, I can say as well, I totally oppose any rezoning. Um, the fact is, it is not a neighborhood duty to support a money-making enterprise to boost tourism or worry about the city's tax base. We depend on our city leaders to ensure, ensure our rights as homeowners and our property. And also, years ago, uh, George Lawrence, who was my councilman, I approached him because I said, I want a little free library here. There's lots of children that walk back and forth to Miramar Park. He asked all of you, and it was denied because y'all considered it a hazard. So. With that said, anyone who knows my neighborhood knows in my slopey front yard, I cannot put it on my property. So however, you considered that, which is representative of a mailbox, a hazard. So I ask you to consider a revolving door of strangers and the unknown in a neighborhood is a bigger hazard than a little free library. So I hope and I pray that you all deny this zoning. The owners may have good intentions, but once the precedent is made where you change the zoning laws, anyone can do anything there. I have a grandchild, my children, many, many kids are in that neighborhood. And if you just go on the internet, you can certainly find all the horrific details of things that happen in Airbnbs. So we just don't want that in our neighborhood. And thank you very much and your consideration for this. I totally oppose it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Howard Amard. I live at 1615 Cayman Cove here in Biloxi. Uh, I'm a new guy. I just moved here this past year. Built a new home right on the beach off of Cayman. And um, this is our permanent residence. We came here, we moved here to retire, my wife and I. We picked this particular neighborhood, this subdivision, because it was single family residence. We sold our home in New Orleans. We sold our businesses moved all of our banking, everything here to finish our life in Biloxi. I wanted a place that was single family residence, which that was, and I didn't want a homeowners association. Those were two of my requirements. And we meet that with the zoning here. We spent over a million dollars on our piece of property and find out in the last few months that they were trying to change the zoning, do a bed and breakfast. I own the property or actually Another piece of property I'm purchasing on May 31st, we already have a purchase agreement, is going to be directly next door to where they, the bed and breakfast would like to put a parking lot. So we're immediately affected by these zoning changes and any bed and breakfast or VRBO. We're against all of that. We, uh, a couple of weeks ago, of course, we went to the planning uh, committee meeting and they um, oppose it that they they voted that you guys uh, do not change the voting and uh, we're in 100 percent agreement with that um, it's my understanding that you would change zoning if there was a su substantial change in the area well this particular area is residential subdivision and it's grown even stronger with all the new residential construction so i'm it's clearly uh you can see that the majority of the neighborhood is against making any changes and i am also with them we're investing um moving our business over here we're going to be investing in other properties and uh but we're looking with agents in areas that are not going to change the zoning i'm having them look for property for me to do my development but in areas that it's suitable 
when we built the house, we had a lot of requirements. We're in a V zone. So we had a lot of requirements with the city. We met every one of those requirements. We didn't ask the city to change anything to uh, accommodate us. And uh, that was a particular reason we, we chose that subdivision. So I ask that you uh, leave the subdivision and the zoning and all the requirements as it is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else on this side of the room? Hey, my name is Summer Lord, and I represented the Hoys in the purchase of the property on Glen Sweatman um, that they're trying to do the bed and breakfast in. Okay, so the reason that they purchased this property is because we went to the city prior to the purchase. Um, we knew that there would be the requirement to have it rezoned. With all our discussions with the city and through the development review committee or whatever we had to go sit through, um, we just got a lot of positive feedback about how, you know, essentially it met all the requirements to be rezoned and be given the um, conditional use permit. Um, first, it's basically three separate properties. It's already multifamily on the one property. There's, there's the house itself. Um, then there is a one bedroom cottage um, in a detached garage and then above the garage itself there's another unit so it's three distinct units on the one property um, there's the four parcels of, of land that come with it it's got um, already some slab to the south and on those slabs that the development review committee was saying we would have to put in or they whatever would have to put in their plans to make the parking lots and the spacing and all that kind of stuff they were to present that but the the good thing was that um, those those two parcels attached to Iberville so you have they were saying it was really good and positive that they had its own separate driveway to basically what be would be the bed and breakfast and the entrance from Iberville and then for them where it is their primary residence they're going to be on the property at all time there was the issue of safety in this that and other but they're going to live there so they're going to be able to control what goes on on that property but Iberville directly across the street from the drive of these other parcels so it is part of their um, part of their land or whatnot that property right across the street is already zoned community business and short terms are allowed by right so all these different things each bedroom had its own bathroom within the um, main house um, that it was already basically multifamily that they were going to live there on the property when we went to the development review committee all they stated was essentially th that the parking lots would have to be you know more distinguished or whatnot and that way they would have to get a um, like a sprinkler system for like the fire department and everything but it was basically like you have you know it meets the requirements essentially except for the zoning change and since community business is right across the street and everything else was sufficient they were like so that's why I went ahead and proceeded with the purchase okay. so hey. <laughs> if you could uh, print your name and sign in on the sheet please uh, what was your name again for the record? What Summer, was your name? Summer Lord. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else in the side room? Mr. Monroe? Good afternoon. Thank you all for uh, listening to us. Uh, my name is Jerry Monroe. Uh, our family owns the lots immediately east of this proposed bed and breakfast on Sweatman. You know, we're concerned uh, the future development of our property. You know, we'd like to sell them for houses. That's what's happening here. The, the other thing that bothers us is we've already seen cars being parked on our property while they were working on their house. And we just don't think that they're going to take care of the neighborhood. That's just our opinion. Ms. Hunt back here has said some things the same way. This is a place where I grew up as a kid. Lots of kids are there, Miramar Park, way down to the beach. Go fishing, have fun. That's what this is about. If this was supposed to be something that the city of Biloxi was gonna do, this would have already had some sort of jurisdictional or some sort of conditional use before they bought the property. These people should have already done this. They should have done their due diligence. They should have 
looked at this and got the okay and blessing before they bought the property, not after. So in our opinion, it should stay like it is. We feel that our neighborhood is being encroached on. It's a neighborhood. It's not a commercial development. It's not a place where people need to be trying to do bed and breakfasts. There's plenty of places closer to downtown, around the casinos, that are commercial properties. So I ask you to please vote against this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, I'll move to this side of the room, my right, your left. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Christina, and I live on Pops Ferry Landing, and uh, I learned about uh, this uh, issue with my neighbors last uh, meeting, actually from WLOX, uh, when they were debating about placing a gate between uh, my Pops Ferry Landing subdivision and Henge and Place. Um, so I strongly disagree to put in the gate in the public road, and um, I will ask you just to vote against uh, that matter because um, I can uh, list a million of reasons that closing a public road can be a problem, but I'm only going to name five, which is pretty much identical. It's safety, 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 and again, safety. Um, I've been in that uh, Pops Ferry Landing. I was living for more than a decade, and I raised my son in there. He's in uh, medical school in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm currently raising my daughter in here. It's a very safe neighborhood. I understand problems happen. We have problems um, sometimes with gun issues, you know, some um, problem in the neighborhood that has been there forever. Even um, I can back it up. Uh, 12 years ago when I first moved in the subdivision, uh, my house is right up off a Pops Ferry Road, and uh, we had a problem with speed limit, for example. People were speeding in that corner of SAC because there is a big wide road right in front of my house and people were coming with speed and they were bumping into my uh, mailbox. And uh, we've, been, uh, we've been here 12 years plus years ago trying to solve that problem and we couldn't do anything about it. We're trying to put like a, one of those roundabout things in the middle of the street because like I said, it's very wide and I was afraid that somebody's gonna come actually straight into my house and bump into my house and into my son's bedroom. So what we did, we put a palm tree right there because we couldn't get nothing established from the city at that time. They were said there's nothing we can do, not even a bump road that didn't even exist 12 plus years ago. Now I see in the neighborhood bumps road, you know, for speed limits and all. So um, we've been having problem, but what we need to do, we need to unite neighborhood. We need to make communities safe by uniting us. We don't need to divide us with a gate with a wall, closing public street. I use that street a lot myself. I'm sure you use it. Everybody else in here probably use it if you live in that area. I use it a lot. And it's a safe neighborhood for both communities. Uh, Hengen Place, it's a new community, new houses. Ours is older community, but they're, yet they're still safe community for both places. And I believe we can both live in the community that it's united. We live in the United States of America. We don't, need, we don't live in the divided states of America. And we need to stay like that. We need to stay. I take this for granted. I am a citizen by neutralization, so I didn't take, I wasn't born here, but so I didn't take the citizen by. Uh, Thank you very much. Your time's up. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Yes, sir, in the back. You're next. Hi, my name is Thomas Ward. I live at 166 Jefferson Davis Avenue. I did not originally come, uh, come to the meeting planning to speak, but as I've listened to everyone else, I thought it might be worth saying. Uh, again, I am against the zoning changes. Uh, I'm from originally from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, I started uh, following properties in your area six years ago. 
uh, on Zillow uh, because I had read in Coastal Living Magazine that the property, beach property in Biloxi was cheaper than anywhere else because I was originally looking for Alabama and Florida property for a beach house. So I originally bought my piece of property, seeing it on Zillow, with the plans of making it a bed and breakfast too. Uh, I have two pieces of, uh, two homes on my property. Both were rental houses. They were long-term rentals. Uh, they had separate meters, gas, electric, water. And uh, I bought it again originally to planning to make it a two short-term, long-term rentals. Uh, shortly after moving into my neighborhood, I found out how great the people were. I now have both pieces of property tied to the same meters. Uh, I'm a permanent resident here because I loved our neighborhood. I'm actually in charge of our uh, neighborhood, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? What? No, not watch. We get together. Uh, we try to eat dinner out every Thursday night. We have anywhere from 5 to 20 people. I'm in charge of the, uh, the text that goes out to everybody to see who's all getting together as I call the restaurants and try to reserve a table large enough for us. Uh, it's an excellent community. Excellent. Again, I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I had no desire to live in Biloxi, Mississippi. I had never seen your beaches and prior to me buying your home, my home. Uh, again, I saw it as a business opportunity, an opportunity to turn a dollar. Now I'm living here. Again, like the other gentleman, I've moved all my banking here. Again, you, uh, like I said, you, I, um, I just don't know why you would want to change it. And again, as everyone else has reflected, um, it just opens up the door. Next thing you know, people are using it as business opportunities. They don't live here, and there's a lot. You, you do things different when you live here. Again, I'm spending a lot of money on my house currently because I'm making it my own. I'm making it what I want. I'm not just using it as a rental house. So that's my words. But thank you again for listening and opening this up. Thank you, and welcome, Mr. Ward. Anyone else? Gentleman in the back. Hi, my name is Brian Slosher. I live directly north of the proposed bed and breakfast on Sweatman. Uh, I live at 155 Clower Street. Um, I want to voice my support of the bed and breakfast. I think the neighbors closest would be the most affected. I don't see any reason to think that they wouldn't take care of the property and uphold the relationships we have in the area already as opposed to short-term rentals where the owner could be in Texas or Louisiana this bed and breakfast the owners are going to be there accommodating them if there is any problem you'll certainly be able to go and talk with them as I would if if I had a problem with anything that was happening um, we live at the beach this is a tourist area whether you, you like it or not um, now we want families in the area Many of the casinos in the area, the casino I work at, I work at Island View Casino, is, has gone to 21 and up. I know Treasure Bay Casino has also gone to 21 and up. Where are the families going to turn? I, I just think we have limited opportunities for families to come and enjoy our beautiful area. And as Southern hospitality goes, I think we should welcome everyone into our community. As long as they abide by certain restrictions or ordinances, there can be restrictions placed on these type of properties to ensure that they don't bother anyone in the community. And I think as long as those rules are established and followed, I would welcome them to live and enjoy next to my, my residence. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm going to ask you uh, not, to de not to deny their request and uh, give you some reasons um, that this is not, uh, this is, this is going to attract families, like he said, uh, and I, I think this is going to beautify the neighborhood uh, even more if you go by and look at the changes they've already made. Uh, they're going to continue improving. Uh, they're not planning on living somewhere else and just renting out the property. It's not a typical type of rental situation. They're actually living on property. 
And it, if you go in and just visit the venue, you'll see that it's incredibly well taken care of. Uh, the Dan, who's proposing to, to, the, the, to run the bed and breakfast, is a master chef. So that should tell you about the, the kind of people that they want visiting Biloxi. And, and if, you, if you go to other historic towns similar to Biloxi, places like Natchez, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, there are bed and breakfasts that are absolutely beautiful in and near residential areas. I've stayed in several of them, and it, it's just, it has the great potential to improve the neighborhood and certainly improve the city of Biloxi. And furthermore, I've gotten to know Dan and Heidi personally and, and think that they're great people. They have outstanding work ethic. Evidently, they're not going to be the kind of people that are going to let the property become dilapidated. But again, they're going to just improve both the neighborhood uh, and the city of Biloxi. So uh, I would just ask you if you, if you at this time can't uh, not deny it, but maybe put it off and, and go visit the property and talk with them, listen to their vision uh, for what they want to do, and also invite the neighbors to, to go by and, and talk with them personally uh, and, and get to know them as neighbors and see what they want to do and how they want to use that property and how they are pro-neighborhood. Uh, and pro Biloxi. Thank you. Sir, can I get you to state your name and address and then sign, make sure you sign in the same? Sure. My name is Chris King. I live at 3647th Street. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Doris Cadigan. I live at 188 St. Charles Avenue. I was not present at the Planning Commission meeting on May 5th, but I reviewed all of the testimony presented there, positive and negative. And in my opinion, the negative comments seem to be based on fear of the unknown and fear of change, with not much to substantiate their claims. The three immediate homes to the Glenn Sweatman property in question do not object. We had one here today and expressing his, uh, his approval of the project if you were to approve it. The concern from distant neighbors is that there will be a stream of visitors that will cheapen or detract from the area. There is no evidence that that happens. A thriving bed and breakfast attracts the best type of additional tourism, one of the cornerstones of the economy here. Visitors who choose B&Bs are typically sensitive, well-financed travelers who prefer the charm and security of a private home to an impersonal hotel. B&B owners take pride in their small business and feel responsible for the guests having an enjoyable stay. A study by Michigan State University identifies B&B customers as middle-aged, well-educated professionals with couples comprising two-thirds of that group. Biloxi's neighboring communities have B&Bs in residential areas. Pascagoula has one, Ocean Springs, Gulfport, Pass Christian, and Bay St. Louis has four, all in residential areas. And obviously, as mentioned previously, there are B&Bs in other Mississippi communities in residential areas. Hattiesburg has one, Vicksburg has eight, and Natchez has over 40 B&Bs and inns, most of which are in historic homes in residential areas. The traffic issues cited as a negative are really negligible, I believe, since access to the Hoy property would be almost entirely from 90 and Iberville into the Hoy property driveway. Guests would not be using Clower or Miramar to access it. And the Keesler gate traffic is only temporary as far as I understand the increase there. So in conclusion, I believe Dan and Heidi Hoy are hospitality professional, professionals and their small business, if you grant it, will be an asset to this community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on this side of the room would like to speak? Yes, sir. Oh, come on. Yep. Hello, distinguished council members. My name is Jennifer King, and I also reside at 3647th Street. 
I am here um, to ask you to approve Dan and Heidi's um, bed and breakfast on 1611 Gwen Glen Sweatman Street. Um, I would like to go over some facts and fallacies um, that I've heard during this meeting today. Um, fact is that Dan and Heidi will be living on site. This is not like your normal um, Airbnb where it could be managed by someone in New York um, and uh, living off site. So they will be on site. They will be neighbors for these people, um, not uh, just someone who uh, wants to make money from another state. They're looking to invest in Biloxi. Um, they want to breathe life into a house that has mainly sat vacant, if I understand correctly. Um, this house was used by a family that lives out of state, um, only for a parties a couple of times a year, and then the house was vacant the rest of the year. This will not be so, and this is not good for a community in general, for a large house and a multi um, different structures to set vacant for long periods of time. Um, Dan is also a master chef, um, and Heidi is a chef as well, and they want to bring that experience to Biloxi. This is not going to be a place for frat parties, um, which would disrupt the neighborhood. This is going to be a place for anniversaries, honeymoons, girls' weekends. It's going to be a luxury getaway, something that will be attract the type of visitors that Biloxi would be looking for. Um, adjacent, the, all the adjacent neighbors are for it. Um, the current adjacent neighbors have no issues, and those would be the ones that would be the most affected. Um, it uh, would bring revenue to Biloxi. Uh, uh, visitors will visit other Biloxi um, businesses and other coastal businesses as well. Um, and those concerned about parking, this is a very large house. So if just a family moves into this house, it's got six bedrooms, let's say they have six children, those children will eventually need vehicles. Where are they gonna park? In the same spot that the visitors would park. So if they have a problem with parking now, they're gonna have a problem if a large family moves in. So um, the fallacies that I've heard have been mostly all opponents with appeals to emotion. Um, and in my opinion, potluck parties would be made better with a master chef in the community. Um, you cannot go off the emotions of a few, talking about nostalgia, to make solid decisions for the city. You must use facts to do this. Please accept um, their proposal and approve it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Heidi Hoy. I reside at 1611 Glen Swetman Street. First and foremost, I'd like to say that we, we live on this property 24 seven, we are there, one of us at least. Everyone here today that opposes us is welcome to come into our home to talk to us, sit down, have a cup of tea with me. We can talk about all of this. We, we don't have to be angry or um, get people upset. A proper bread, bed and breakfast requires the owners to live there. We will be charging people $300 a night to stay in our home. It's a beautiful home. Um, I gave some pictures that of some of the bedrooms that we can see. Um, this is the some of the, this is the parking going from um, it's tilted, but. Um, on the last frame, that was some parking that goes out to Iberville. As you can see, I have a letter from the brick house right next to us that um, the parking will be, the cars will be going out right from her driveway. Um, she did write me a letter. She's in Houston for business and wasn't able to come today. Um, she is fine with it. She doesn't have a problem with it. And like I said, cars will be going right past her driveway. Um, my neighbor across the street is ill today, but I also offered her letter of approval. Um, she also would be affected. She's directly across the street from us, and that's on the corner of Glen Swetman and Clower Street. Since Hurricane Katrina destroyed a lot of the bed and breakfasts that were here before us, there was only one, and that was the Blussy House that was left. 
the Blessy House had no complaints registered with the city that I could find. They were also um, close to the beach and they were in a, a residential area, like many bed and breakfasts are in residential areas. We are only, off, we are only, only asking for the RM10, which does not allow us to rent out our property to have parties or do an Airbnb or VRBO. Again, we are living on that property. We'll be inviting people to come rent a room and have a breakfast in the morning. Three sides of our home are surrounded by eight foot um, walls. They are brick covered in vines all around us. One of the, um, if I could quote someone from the last meeting at the Zoning Commission said, there could be 40 people living there and you wouldn't know it. And that's true. It's all, it's all around us on three sides. The other side does face Cayman Cove and to the water. Across the country, bed and breakfasts are located in neighborhoods like ours. Is that it? Okay. I'm sorry, your time is up. If I could just say one more thing. It's been brought to my attention that a member of this council has a relative that spoke against us on this project. I'm asking for that council member to please, please recuse Thank himself. Thank you, ma'am. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, my name is uh, Alex Moon. I uh, come from a respectable family. Uh, Your address, sir? Sir? Your address? Oh, 159 Miramar Avenue, Thank Luxie. You. Uh, I'm against it. There's just several reasons why. I mean, it's bad enough we got to deal with cruising the coast, scraping the coast. They come flying through the neighborhood, throwing beer bottles, getting out urinating. And, you know, we all have kids, and we've been trying to get the city to put speed bumps in there, and they still don't do it. They changed the signs. They put one sign up there, 25, and in the middle, they put 15. That doesn't make no sense. You should have put both 15. But my question is, is on uh, De Avril Street, that little side street, is the city planning to widen that street? Because you can't get two cars to go down at the same time. Yeah, this is not a Q&A. This is strictly public comments. It's yeah, I understand that, but I just wanted to throw that in there. But, you know, my question is, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I'm just afraid a lot of things are going to happen. You know, I left out of here at 63. I came back home to Biloxi. I was born here, born and bred. And where I live, it's a quiet neighborhood. It's a real quiet neighborhood. Everybody gets along, all the neighbors, everybody, we all, you know, look out for each other. And having that there, it's just, it's going to open up a whole more can of worms. Next you know, you're going to have duplexes, you're going to have apartments, you're going to have a Circle K there. I mean, it's trash, and it's just bad. And it's bad enough right now at Miramar Park because, you know, there's trash and people, and, you know, I just don't really care for it, honestly. It's bad enough the sweatman house is eyesore too, you know, but you know, that's the way I feel. So I hope you guys don't approve it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, we only have time for about two more people, so let me uh, I'll do three more people. The lady that's walking up the aisle. I know. Hi, good afternoon. I'm here. I'm Teresa Thompson, 1506 Avalon. I am here to again oppose the conditional use request for short-term rental for the property at 1501, aka 119 St. George, 
On January the 4th, this conditional use request for the property was denied by you, the council, by a vote of five to one because it did not meet all conditional use standards as required by the land development ordinance. You also heard from the citizens of the neighborhood who are here again today voicing their concerns on the implications of allowing short-term rentals to spread throughout this neighborhood. Yet here we are a few months later discussing the same property which has been expedited without precise definition of significant improvement to meet all standards. The planning permission fact sheet clearly states that a conditional use should only be approved upon finding that all of the nine conditional use standards are met. However, this property is still most importantly in violation of standard C, which states that the conditional use needs to be compatible with the character of the surrounding lands. This property does not connect to Beach Boulevard. Its entry ties directly into the surrounding neighborhood, which is owned residential all the way to Irish Hill. This decision is not isolated to a single property. It sets a precedence by which other properties connected to the neighborhood can easily become short-term rentals, changing the dynamic of a long-standing historic West End Biloxi neighborhood. You, the City Council of Biloxi, agreed with this assessment a few months ago when you voted five to one against granting the conditional use request for this property back in January. I am asking for your help once again to support the residents of this over 100-year-old neighborhood marked by historic homes, families, and people who have lived here for decades by voting against this conditional use request. Thank you for your time and please save our neighborhoods. I do want to make one comment about the bread and breakfast in the fact that because you have to change the zoning, you're going to change the zoning and then you're going to have to do a conditional use, right, to do the B&B or approve the B&B. I understood you weren't supposed to be able to do both things in a residential neighborhood. That's what they've been telling us about short-term rentals. So I'm trying to interested in how this is going to play out. My biggest concern is that because you are changing to a RS10, you have left it open for that property to be expanded with something for duplexes and triplexes or whatever else they want to put back there. Or if they sell the property, somebody else comes in, they already have the zoning. So it's not just whether you put in a B and a B, it's what else can you do and what else might happen around that process of spreading that up through the neighborhood. Because if they can do it there, why can't they do it two blocks up or two houses down? So you destroy a neighborhood by letting it do. Thank you. The gentleman in the very back, he's been waiting patiently. Good afternoon. My name is George Parks. I live in 174 Hannibal Court, Biloxi, Mississippi. I am not speaking about rental today. But I do want to commend the city of Biloxi for having such fine employees that came out and repaired the street in front of our house. Uh, we had a sinkhole that was sinking in in front of Ephraim Lee's house. And recently, they finally sent out the public works construction crew. They tore up the sidewalks. And while they were doing that, I asked them about a place that was right around the corner where the, and I was talking to him and he mentioned something in the very first of the talk to me and he mentioned a trip hazard. I knew that's a technical term. And when he said that, I understood that this is a very good employee. He said, okay, Mr. Parks, we will see what we can do. He told those two sections out it's no longer a trip hazard. I appreciate you all having such fine employees as Mr. Johnson and his construction crew, and I really appreciate someone doing that kind of work for the city of Biloxi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Parks. Um, lady in the front, last, this will be our last speaker. We've went over our time. I'm gonna, I've allowed it, so you'll have the, the last word, so to speak. How's it going? My name is Laurel Portier and I live at 1619 Cayman Cove. 
Um, I'm here to oppose the bed and breakfast. Um, and it's not for a lot of the reasons that a lot of other people here are afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it. I actually um, own a house that is directly in front of it, and I also just purchased a property that is going to butt up against the parking lot that they want to put up. Now, I moved here just a year ago from Louisiana. I'm a business owner myself. I love the area so much that I'm building my, ha my mother a house directly in back of me, and I do not want her view to oversee a parking lot. Would anyone want their mother like going into retirement and looking at a parking lot and being by a business? I love my neighborhood. We moved here because it was a single residential family neighborhood. And, you know, just like Howard there spoke, me and Howard are neighbors, and he purchased the other property. Him and I both oppose it. Like, I know someone said that all of the nearby neighbors are all for it. Howard and I are directly affected by this business, and I'm not scared of it. I use bed and breakfast myself. I love Air and Air Airbnbs. Um, we travel a lot. Um, I'm an entrepreneur myself. I, you know, I really love Heidi. Um, every time I see her, I wave, we talk. Um, the house is great. It's beautiful. I have nothing against that. Um, the logistics are just a little weird. Everyone keeps saying that they are going to use the entrance from Iberville, but what one of the, pic the pictures don't show that there's a big oak tree in the middle of that driveway that they say that they want to use. What are, so are cars going to be going on other people's properties to have to go in? to the parking lot that they want to build. And so I just, I, I think bed and breakfast are a great idea, but in this situation, I just, in this neighborhood, it's, the logistics are just not there. You know, there's not enough room for parking. There's not enough room for the driveway. Um, so that's the reason I oppose it, is it, the logistics just don't make sense where that location is. And like I said, I will be directly affected by it because I'm going to purchase, um, we already have the contract to purchase the lot that butts up against that on May 31st, just like Howard is too. So him and I are both building single family residential houses. And so there are two more houses that are going up, that are going to butt up against the bed and breakfast. So it's not just a big open lot. We are planning to bring two more families into the neighborhood, so. All right, thank, thank you. you. Welcome to Biloxi as well. And this will conclude uh, public comments. We'll move on to the policy agenda. Ordinance Clerk. to approve a zoning map amendment for RE residential estate to neighborhood business for the property located at 13133 Reese Bergeron Road. Chair, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. All right. Moved by Mr. Barrett, second by Ms. Newman. First reading. First reading. Okay. Item B. Ordinance to amend text within the land development ordinance to introduce and define the specific use medical cannabis. Chair, entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All right. Got a motion uh, by Mr. Tisdale, seconded by Mr. Gines. This is a first reading. Item C. Resolution to grant preliminary subdivision replat approval for the marsh, the reserve at Marsh Island subdivision, 745 Barrett Road. Do I have a motion? All right. This board right. by Mr. Deming. We second by Ms. Newman. This discussion. Oh, do we all? This is a property that's located at uh, Causeway Park where the former Barrett Road mobile home park was located. Uh, the developer came before the Planning Commission and the Council uh, last year and it asked for a 16 lot subdivision. He was going to remove the mobile home park and he got approval to do that. Well, when he, when he got in, he started calculating the road construction and the infrastructure improvements. What he decided to do was to go back and change it to a nine lot subdivision that would have larger lots in it, uh, but would only have one road coming in, which is a cul-de-sac. Now, he owns eight of these lots that are proposed. There's a ninth lot right on the water that he does not own, but in the cul-de-sac, he did provide a curb cut for that owner and a perpetual e easement that would allow that owner to get to his property. That 
is that owner in um are they are they okay with this yes yes we have no objection to this it's a great use of the piece of property okay. single family houses i don't have any further questions yeah. miss newman anyone else on the council any questions yeah. That's a good thing. Uh, just a comment. As I recall, this used to be a, a trailer park a few yes, years, a few years back, and everything, yes, and um, it was a rather older trailer park. Park. Personally, I'm glad to see that it's gone. So, we, thank you. we are too. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there anyone here uh, representing this property? Would you like to say anything before we vote on it? My name is Jack Schmidt. I'm with Machado Patano. Uh, I live at 138 Cruz Street. I'm here to represent the owners of the property. Uh, like Mr. Creel said, uh, we came before council on this about a year ago. It was going to be a larger subdivision. Um, we received approval from council for preliminary plats and kind of began our design process. Uh, we've kind of taken a step back and looked at it again, and we decided on a smaller development uh, that will result in larger lots. We think it's a great use for this property. Uh, on our property alone, we'll have two waterfront lots, and then we'll actually have a common lot that will be shared by all the residents, providing them waterfront access. Uh, like I said, I think this is a great subdivision. It's a beautiful piece of property, and I think it'll be a great addition to Biloxi. Thank you for those comments. Uh, call for the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Item D. Resolution to deny a zoning map amendment to authorize a change in zoning from RS 7.5 medium density single family residential to RM 10 low density for property located at 1611 Glen Sweatman Street. I move to deny. I second it. All right. There's a motion to deny by uh, Mr. Lawrence. It was seconded duly by Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Lawrence. This is a large single family residential neighborhood and nothing warrants a change and putting a bed and breakfast or a commercial business inside of a family, single family neighborhood, none. So definitely this is something that uh, denied by the planning commission, that, that we don't always accept that, but that was denied by them unanimously. And it does affect the neighborhood big time when you start making changes, there was no warrant the reason to change this inside this neighborhood. So I vote to deny it, and I hope the rest of the council respects the people within the area and protect their homes, their property value, their lifestyle. Everything would change when you start changing single family residents or neighborhoods into commercial businesses. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Tisdale? I don't have anything to add, thank you. Anyone else on the council? Yeah. I we wouldn't hear from, I think there's a gentleman here that wanted to speak on this. Yep. Is this? No, that's on the short term rental, that's the next time. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anyone else on the council would like just to? Just a quick question. Uh, how did the planning commission vote, Ms. Skrill? I do have some more. Oh. It was, uh, excuse me, it. The planning ahead. commission voted 10-0-1 um, on, uh, on this bed and breakfast. Um, I think one of the reasons that they did that was because the the property surrounding it is zoned RS 7.5, even though a lot of it is vacant. But this house, this particular house that we're talking about, is exactly why the bed and breakfast ordinance was written. It was designed so that people who have these larger homes would have a means to maintain them to that level. You know, the Hoyas came in, they went through DRC, and they went through uh, Planning Commission. I think the Planning Commission was looking solely at the zoning around the property. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Hoya, one of, the, one of the differences between today's meeting and that meeting was that the people who lived immediately around the property didn't come to that meeting, but she's provided y'all with emails and letters from those neighbors who live right next door who are not opposed to this. There's a very strict set of regulations that goes along with the bed and breakfast uh, that make sure that their, their parking is correct, that make sure that there are not 
uh, loud parties and those kind of things. Uh, it, they, they're not allowed to conduct any commercial activity in this RM10 zoning, which is a, the lowest of the multifamily zonings. For any event they have, they have to come pull a special permit to do that, and it has to be over by 10 o'clock. The big difference between this, and it's already been stated, between a bed and breakfast and a short-term rental is that the owners actually have to live there, or the manager has to live there on site uh, and, and manage the property the right way. So um, this is, you know, we, we keep hearing about short-term rental and, and a bed and breakfast destroying neighborhoods. I can tell you that we've issued 365 licenses for short-term rentals and I'm not aware of a single neighborhood that has been destroyed. And as you know, my department would be getting the, the complaint calls about that, uh, were that the case. Um, the change in a character of the neighborhood happened when everything south of this was wiped out. Uh, certainly most of the requests we're going to be getting for this property is going to be commercial. You'll notice that most of the controversial cases that we're having right now or the properties along the beach or within a block of the beach. Um, and, and, you know, people have gotten used to that view and they've gotten used to that property being vacant. And as developers come in and are proposing something now, there's some opposition to it. But there's a certain amount of, a certain amount of activity that when you live one block from the busiest commercial corridor in the city, you, you just can't expect the same type of sanctuary that you would get in a, in, in a place, you know, one of these subdivisions that are out in the middle of residential property, that there's going to be some commercial activity, whether it's some traffic or whatever. Uh, I've met with the Hoyas. I'm convinced that they will be responsible owners. This is not a conditional use situation like uh, uh, some of the others that we've had. This is the lowest zoning that they could ask for is RM10 in order to accommodate the need that they have, and that's what they asked for, so. Mr. Chair, with this, with this lowest level of, of zoning, what would it open up the door to, if it were to open up the door to anything? Um, well, I mean, typically, you know, and, and some of the concerns that were raised at the Planning Commission, well, they're gonna tear this house down, they're gonna turn around and build apartments. I, I, nothing they said during the process would convince me that that's their intention. They bought this house because they were really attracted to this house, and I think they'll use it for the purpose that uh, that it was used for. Um, you know, we've heard we've heard comments from people um, who own other property around this that uh, say, you know, we we want this to remain commercial. But you know, my experience tells me that if those people are approached by a, a restaurant or a hotel or something like that and have the opportunity to change to uh, get that type of development that they'd probably be the ones in here arguing that there has been a change in the character of the neighborhood and that it needs to be rezoned to CB or something like that. So um, the worst that they could do is put apartments on here at 10 units per acre, again, which is the lowest density multifamily zoning that we have. Let me get Paul, I'll come right back I'll to you, Councilman. Mr. Uh, Tisdale. On the parking area which is south of the home is that correct yes sir. well they have they have parking on both sides they have parking on the sweatman side and they have parking on the south side right on the on the south side does that that is it a separate parcel or was it a separate parcel originally and, and let me tell you what i'm getting at jerry i'm thinking cayman brack was the old subdivision there that went that left the premises, so to speak, in Hurricane Katrina. And I'm wondering if that parking area that was mentioned several times, if that is one of the, or was one of the residential lots in Cayman Brack. Okay, it appears, it appears from the plat that's in your packet that there are actually three pieces of property associated with this. I'm sure that the Hoyas, if asked, would collapse all of those into one. If, if that would uh, help, you know, the situation. Um, we typically do not require a person to collapse their lots until they at least have the comfort of knowing that they're getting the approval that they're asking for. 
So does do any of those three lots, one obviously faces Glenn Sweatman, do either of the other two, did they front that cul-de-sac in Cayman Brack? Uh, both of those, both of those come over to Iberville. There is not a connection uh, going to the east to Cayman. Okay. They both turn to the west and go directly to Iberville. Okay. The, um, the other observation, the only bed and breakfast that the, the city had operable recently was uh, Chateau Blessy there on Highway 90. And, and where I am on this bed and breakfast thing is it's location, location, location. My, my concern is there's a commercial enterprise in a residential area. And I know that I think the, the comment was made that it might be construed as spot zoning. That's arguable. Um, and you made a comment regarding short-term rentals that I just wanted to, to comment on. You said that there's nothing to indicate that short-term rentals have destroyed neighborhoods. And I would just toss out that Briarfield subdivision now has, um, when the latest complex is constructed, there will be about 75 short-term rentals slash apartments, and there will only be 72 individual residential units. So short-term rentals in that instance, I'm not knocking it, that's just where we find ourselves, uh, are going to make a big impact in that area. The, the other thing about this change in the neighborhood uh, and quite often Hurricane Katrina is referred to, but we, we had the land ordinances revised after Katrina. So if there was a mistake in zoning, um, I would assume that it would have been corrected uh, as being foreseeable perhaps at that time. But things being the way they are, things change, things stay the same. Um, but anyway, I, I, that's me, the only additional back, comments that I Let me I go have. back to my comment though. My comment about destroying the neighborhoods didn't mean that we were not going to have short-term rental in the neighborhoods, but the, built, the, the two apartment complex, the one apartment complex that has actually been built, we have not received any complaints about that destroying the neighborhood. Yes, it did. It is short-term rental, but uh, as far as noise and traffic and trash and litter and those kind of things, loud music. We've had no complaints about that. And, and I, I would think that it's a bit early. I, under, I understand your point. I respect that. But I would also think that homeowners in a few years that will see because of the short-term rentals and the number and the concentration in that area, I think it's going to be hard to hang on to their property values. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, Gary, I take exception to what you said about those people didn't know about showing up. These neighbors showed up at that planning commission meeting, a ton of them, and voiced their opinion. So they didn't make it. That, that's your fault. Mm. In your speech right now, there's nothing to change the laws that you got in place. There's no warrant to change the bed and breakfast commercial into a single family resident. And that weak argument you put about the hurricane, the hurricane took away home. Didn't change the character of the neighborhood, so you can quit using that one. Didn't change nothing. You sit there pushing this now. Evidently, you're a planning commission. I believe you before could all of them voted against it and want to stay. So, someone here before this meeting now and try to get people to change their vote is not right. They shouldn't have been at the meeting. They had all these arguments. They were there. The planning commission was advertised just like you're supposed to do. They were all the people that went that opposed it. Mm -hmm. And now you sitting there say, well, oh, the other ones didn't know anything about it. They should have came. I, well, that's not your fault, and it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. The people who was against it, the people that live in the neighborhood, the majority of them, every one of them went and voiced their opinion at the planning commission meeting. So, I mean, to sit there and say they should have been notified, they were. They didn't go, that's their fault. Mm -hmm. Our job is to take care of the neighborhood. And that neighborhood is a single family resident neighborhood, period. And no warrant to change it to commercial exists. And in your own laws that you're supposed to support an LDO in the city of Bluxton. And, and we do enforce those. And, you, and my, job, my job is to bring development to the table and to make sure that whenever y'all vote, 
you're voting on fact and you're not voting on emotion. We've had people here today uh, that live actually right next door to this property, and we've had people here that live nowhere near this property that's come in to make comments about that. And we, we have expect, to, hey, we expect to find this that balance. Live, that live by have farm. to find this balance between, you know, who is actually going to be directly affected by this because we're going to have much more development projects coming in that are going to want to locate on Beach Boulevard. And so the council is going to have to weigh that. My job is just to bring it to you. Your job is to vote it up or down, and we live with whatever you decide. Well, you got to quit using emotion, too. When you mess with somebody's property and their home and the way they live at and their lifestyle, yeah, they're pretty emotional. Who wouldn't be? You're affecting the way they live. So, yes, you are. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Um, Anybody else have a comment? I got one comment. I want to. Yeah, I want to finish Gons. up. I want to finish up. All right, you want to uh, give um, Mr. Gons? I just had a. I just uh, had. Go ahead. The last word. He still had the word. Oh, you still had the word. the word. Finish up. <laughs> finish up. <laughs> I I had the floor initially. All right, um, Mr. Gons, take it away. Yeah, but but closing in closing on on the subject, uh, food for thought. You know, because right now what I'm seeing is is kind of blurred line a little bit. If we were to create a district for short-term rentals, we would know exactly what we need to, where we can go and where we can't go, uh, from the neighborhoods to the areas of short-term rental. And I think that's where the uh, uh, the air, all the uh, mis confusion is at. So, in the future, and food for thought, if we can get a line drawn, we would know where we need to go and where we. Uh, are not able to go and that will help out the residents more and that will make uh things clear in the future thank you we, we've talked yes sir we've you got something to say director i was just going to say that uh, you know we we brought overlay districts to the planning commission and to the city council in the past mm -hmm. to create an overlay district because really once you get away from the water Mm -hmm. Once you get one or two blocks beyond the water, the short-term rental issue is not as big a deal. People want to be close to the water, walking distance right. to get there. But when you get up into the middle part of Biloxi, it's just not a big deal. Right. But uh, yeah, there's like an that expectation okay. that, uh, and we'll get to it in this next case, there's an expectation that if you're within one or two blocks of the beach, that you know, you're know you in, in the view of the beach and that they expect that right so anyway okay. thank you thank you sir. director um, and my comments on this issue uh, are this and these are my my opinions uh, all these people are here today you were motivated and you're you were inspired to come here today for a reason and that's to talk to your representatives and your councilmen in this council today and you're you're pleading for something you know and we have to listen to that you know we Every four years we run and we come ask you, give me your vote. We're going to represent you. We're going to represent what you want to the best of our ability. And you cannot re remove the emotion. I've heard emotion today from folks when they moved to the beautiful Biloxi. You know, Biloxi stirred emotion in you, and we're, we're glad to hear that. That's a beautiful song that you're singing, and we hope to continue that story over and over again. And here we are today talking about Okay, we have the potential for a business uh, that wants to locate and wants to do some things, but we also have the residents that are coming out and saying, hey, look, we have this quiet enjoyment, and we, we elected you uh, to preserve our quiet enjoyment. So it, it's a tough position to be in a lot, uh, but I certainly understand the emotion in it, and I'll, I'll never discount the emotion of anything. Can I go? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Creel, uh, back when we approved the Blessy House, was residents coming out against it? No, there was some concern that there was going to be loud music, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Blessy at the time assured them that there would be no loud music coming from from that operation. He was good about coming in and pulling the uh, activity permits whenever we would have an event there, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't recall any complaints what, that we received. What year was it they were approved? Well, uh, it was, he actually had his approval before Hurricane Katrina, so I don't know exactly what year. Did he have to go through the same processes to get a zoning change or? Um, I'm not sure uh, because 
the the license would have still been in effect after Hurricane Katrina. Remember that house was was destroyed. I don't know. I was young. That's why I'm asking. And he he <laughs> rebuilt that. Mm -hmm. uh, so he would have still had his conditional use in place. Correct. Uh, after Hurricane Katrina and after he conducted the rebuild. Okay, but you don't recall any citizens coming out in opposition to a bed and breakfast. I don't know. Which butts up Seal Avenue, the most prestigious street in Biloxi, right? And no complaints whatsoever about this bed and breakfast? Not Loud that. music, no. traffic, mm -mm. not um, being cohesive with the neighbors at all, no complaints. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mr. Creel, um, have you seen, there are some of the things that some of the residents mentioned um, that I just took notes on. Um, one, uh, Summer Lord mentioned, I think it may have been Summer Lord or Ms. Hoy that mentioned that the building was um, guarded by walls on X amount of sides. Mm -hmm. I wanted to revisit that and, and then the parking. I don't want, there was a resident that mentioned she just bought a property here and I've, I've toured that property before you guys purchased it. I actually looked at the property. And so the, the plots that are in front of it or so, south of it, mm -hmm. um, is there any plan to do anything with that area to segregate it from the few houses that are south of it? That was not discussed, but I'm sure Ms. Hoyle would, or her husband would be glad to step up here and answer that question. If, if you would. To ask him. If anyone surrounding us would have um, would have wanted us to do something, we certainly, like I said, we would be willing to talk to anyone about that. We brought that up on the Monroe property that we would like to do maybe some greenery fencing or something like that, trees, bushes, what have you, or we can continue a fence line. Um, the neighbors off of Highway 90, um, directly on Highway 90, and then um, they're planning to buy the properties right behind them and in front of us. Um, we would be willing to put up a, a fence line or some sort of greenery if they would prefer. Um, that was never brought up to us before, but we're certainly willing to, to do that for them if they need more privacy. Well, I think you heard a couple of concerns regarding something like that with two of the properties south of you that were being developed or um, going to be developed? Originally in the planning commission, they mentioned that they would be able to hear car doors slam and things like that um, from our parking lot. And um, no offense to anybody, but they live on Highway 90. I'm not sure that they would hear any car doors slamming. But if they would want a fence, we're, we are willing to do that. What, what will your times of, of operation be? When will people be coming in and out of the of The, the times of operation? Yeah. Um, we would have quiet hours from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. At 7.30 a.m. is when we would be serving breakfast, just to our guests. Right. And our guests would be a maximum of 12 people. We have six rooms. Right. So it could be, you know, one couple or up to 12 people. And there was some concern that you guys did not uh, rezone this prior. Of course you can't because you don't have privity to the property, so you can't do this. But, the, but you did discuss it with who prior to buying this? Um, we did discuss it. Um, our realtor actually represented us um, in what committee was that? DRC. DRC committee. Um, Mr. Creel, were you a president in that meeting? Do we, was anybody present that we're aware of other than DRC members? Ed might have been there, yeah. And, and they were positively optimistic about the rezoning in this project? They said it would be, um, I'm, they didn't say easy, they said, you know, this is, this is exactly what this is meant for. We, we understood that um, we couldn't go for a zone change until we owned the property. And we decided to, to do this. I mean, we knew there was a chance, I guess. We also will be having to do a sprinkler system in the building. So this is going to take some time. Thank um, you, Ms. Hoyt. It, it's a process to get, to get a business going. Mr. Creer, what was your recollection of the ERC? Actually, Ms. Hoya, Ms. Hoya met with me after the meeting. Um, to uh, talk with me about you know what her options were now let me just let me clarify something 
we, we never lead people to believe that they're going to get approval either at the Planning Commission or the City Council because I've been doing this for 35 years and I know there's no such thing as a sure thing when it comes to uh, a vote like this. But we do tell them, you know, here are the good points about what you're proposing. Here are the places where you're going to run into some opposition. You've got a 50-50 chance of getting it. And, and really, it's it's up to the, the presentation and the arguments that you make. They, they did, but I guess what I'm really good, they did lay the groundwork to the extent that they could to uh, be proactive about this prior to buying this. This wasn't just a purchase and then deciding to, to go. They did some due diligence, prior, what they could prior to purchasing this property. Is that is that an accurate statement? I'm not sure that they checked with us. Uh, I'm not aware that they checked with us to see can we use this for a bed and breakfast? Can we use this for a short-term rental? I don't know what their realtor may have told them about the property. Um, but they went before the DRC, or they met they with went the before DRC. the DRC. I, okay. I can tell you, we don't mislead people. We, we I, let I get that. I'm, I'm more I'm more concerned with with their um, their efforts, other than what the DRC said or did. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Creel. Um, <clears throat> I have a question. Well, I have the microphone, though. All right. Thank you. Um, the uh, that's how you do it, Felix. I'm just, saying, just tell them. Um, it, it, look, it's a it's a very tough situation. I know. I know. Councilman Glavin alluded to our duty to represent our, our citizens and our our constituents here, and and I agree that that we do have to take into consideration everyone's emotions. And and I will. And it's a tough it's a tough job to sit up here and look at people, and tell a group of people that they agree that you agree with them, and another group that you don't agree with them. And it, I commend all of you guys on the council here because I, I personally know how difficult it is. Um, but we have seen so many so many short term applications come in here, and we hear a lot of these these. Um, concerns about what's going to happen in neighborhoods and what's going to happen to properties and we've seen typically quite the op opposite we've seen people come in and take care of their properties and improve their properties and and we see in this situation we have some owners that are going to live on the property and maintain the property and and establish a relationship with the community um, you know th that's also part of the responsibility is to do to do the right thing um, for the city of Biloxi as a whole as well as every individual. Um, ladies, gentlemen on the council, um, I think it's diff it's tough to make this call, in my opinion. I'm going to vote to support this, and that's the end of my comments. All right. Mr. Lawrence. I put it, the, put it on the table to deny, so I call for the question. You okay with that? You want to I'm, one other, one other Let me clear. I'm going to vote to support the I, project, I not the denial. I know you want to call for the question, but he's been waiting patiently uh, for some more comments. Last word, and then we'll call for the question. Sure. I'd just, I just like to point out that um, an exception is an exception. When this happens multiple times, it becomes a trend. This property is zoned residential, 7.5. All the properties around it are zoned residential, 7.5. So the last time I recall an exception being made where a residential property was rezoned for short-term rentals was in, in Ward 7. And I, I, this is what bothers me. You have neighborhoods that are RS 7.5, RS 10, or RS 5, whatever. Once you move a commer approve a commercial entity in there, then everybody thinks, I want to do that too. Now, I'm not. I have no no doubt the 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 Hoys are are respectable people. Personally, I just think it's a poor location for the reason I just described, and that uh, if this if these kinds of things continue, then you won't have many traditional neighborhoods left, particularly on the peninsula here. That's, all. That's my final comment. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Tisdale. We have a call for the question. The motion uh, is to deny. All in favor uh, in the motion to deny. All opposed? Four to two. Motion carries.
Right. The clerk would uh, read the next item. Resolution granting conditional use approval for short-term rental located at 119 St. George Avenue. A motion to deny. All right. Motion to deny. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Lawrence. It, it's uh, we it's pretty much sitting in the same thing with St. George. It's a short-term rental sitting inside of a neighborhood. And we said you have to meet the nine conditional uses according to our laws of the ordinances of the city of Bucks. It does not. So I move it to deny C because it not, does not meet the ordinance that we passed ourselves, this council, the nine has to, but it has to qualify. And it says in that all nine conditional uses has to be met. By our law, that's what we put in. All nine uses have to be met. They even consider it. Don't have to be passed. They even consider it. It does not. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Tisdale. The only thing that's changed from the last time we voted on this in January is, is that the address has been changed from an Avalon address to a St. George address. That's that's the only thing that's changed. That concludes my comment. All right. We'll start over here. Mr. Guy, do you have any comment? Yeah. Um, like I said, if, if we're going to set that precedence, we need to go ahead and create the district. And until we create the district, um, I'm going to continue with my vote. Thank you. All right. Ms. Newman. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Matt McDonald. I'm, I am at 119 St. George Avenue. My property is zoned RM30. When I when I purchased the when I purchased the property, um, when I purchased the property, I did my due diligence. Um, I my realtor had had let me know that the RM30 was proper zoning for short-term rental, and then on top of that, so I called the city. I talked to my realtor. They said, yeah, I shouldn't have a problem. So I went through planning the first time. The um, Planning approved it the first time it came to council. There was some um, neighbors that were objecting to it. I listened to all the objections the neighbor had, and since then I've made substantial changes. I've changed the address. I've added the driveway in the front, so the property now is facing um, Ocean Boulevard or Highway 90. Um, I've also recently pulled a permit for stairs are going to be going from off the front of the deck to the front of the house so people will enter from the front. I've, I've put the fence up and back that was to, to separate the, the property there. Um, the parking in front, there's probably at least parking for eight cars so the cars would not have to be on the street. The big A lot of the objections were, were that um, there was gonna be parking there in, back on um, Avalon Street. Again, fence up on Avalon. The, the driveway has been moved to the front and the, the property in front of me is zoned RM30, is approved for short term. So for are setting precedence. The precedence is.
I appreciate all the effort you put into it and listening to the citizens and their issues, their concerns and things, and you trying to negate all those concerns. And I mean, to me, that says something. Um, and to me, this house is literally right, exactly built the same as the house in front off the beach. This, to me, this is still on the beach. It's on that parcel of land where the hotel used to be before you even get to the um, neighborhood. Um, I just, I think it's common sense. Thank you. A uh, couple of things, uh, the house space Avalon, you change it to St. George, neither one of them had anything to do with Highway 90. Your property is not connected to Highway 90. Simple, very simple. No, it's not connected to Highway 90. Uh, simply we got him, Sydney, are you here? Sydney lives right across the street. I want you to come up and explain where you live at and what's going on, not you, Creel, the man that lives there. The house is on the corner of St. George and Avalon, period. Right. Thank you all for the time. Mr. Gladden. Chief, uh, I, I heard the, is, is there anything, uh, Jerry, you want to talk about, is, is it in compliance with the fire codes or well, certainly, variances? Certainly when somebody says something about something illegal being done, I'm going to have to address that. Yeah. I can assure you there was nothing illegal or unethical done on this. When Horton Homes came in and pulled the permit for that house in 2017, uh, it was designed to face Highway 90, even though it didn't have a access to Highway 90. The original address, and I've got all the documents right here, I'll be happy to share them with you, show that the original address on that house was 119 St. George. Now, at some point after they got into construction or got it built, I don't know exactly when, they came in and asked that the address be changed to uh, Avalon. But when uh, the, sit the house sat there for a year or so vacant before Mr. McDonald bought it in 2025, but when this came before the Planning Commission, Mr. McDonald listened to the comments from the neighbors. And, and you know, the reason we're here today is because the, uh, whenever an application is denied, under the ordinance, it's not supposed to come back through the process for at least one year unless, unless there's a significant change to the application. So what Mr. McDonald did, he took those comments that came from the neighbors, he moved the driveway of the house around to St. George to move it to the front of the house. He asked that the address be changed back to 119, which was the original address. 
he put a fence up across the back to create a barrier between him and the neighbors. Uh, and even when the neighbors, uh, Ms. Trahan and uh, Mr. Lawrence came over there and met me over there, they asked if he would consider extending that four foot fence another eight feet over to the west, to, I guess to give them a little bit more view from their uh, back porch, you know, that they sit there. He's tried to do everything he can to be accommodating. Now, to get back to what Mr. Gines was asking for a while ago, creating this overlay district, one of the, th and, and the concerns from the neighbors that this is gonna, you know, be a domino effect, whatever. The RM30 zoning ends at Avalon. It doesn't go any further. So any attempt to open a short-term rental north of Avalon would have to go to the Planning Commission and have to come before the City Council for a zoning change. This is already zoned RM30. They could have built four-story apartments in here without any input from the neighbors. And there are apartments right across the street that come up to the north line of this property. So you've already got a multifamily use right across the street. And then this is basically being used as uh, would be basically used as short-term rental. Um, he moved the driveway, he closed off the driveway in the back. The ordinance says that you assign the address to the nearest frontage near the front entrance of the structure, which is what we did. I don't know all the details about the change to Avalon. Uh, I've got Felicia looking into that right now at what point Horton changed that. But when Mr. Uh, and, and think about it. Would anybody really build a $600,000 house and turn the face of it to Avalon? Uh, I mean, this house was clearly built to face the beach. The living room is on the front. We've got the, the floor plan here if you'd like to see it. It was clearly built to face Beach Boulevard to give them a view of Beach Boulevard. Is uh, it is the, all the variance complied with? Is all the fire code uh, complied with with the uh, fence or the gate? Is that completely yes. without question complied no, with? No question about it. Anytime that we receive a set of house plans, they not only go through us, they go through the fire department. The fire de number one, the fire department sits in on DRC, and number two, the fire department reviews house plans. They come by every afternoon, pick up whatever plans we've collected that day, they take them back over to their department, review them, and only after they bring them back to us can we issue a, a permit to build that house. So all of that went through the process. But it is, in your opinion, it's completely 100% in compliance? Yes, I actually okay. have the measurements that were taken. Okay, that's that's it. That's what I asked. Okay. Uh, also, also, let me point out one other thing. Not only was the application showing uh, 119 St. George, but the elevation certificate that was brought in before a permit could even be issued also has the St. George address on it. Question, then why did you change it to 1501 Avalon? I, I just got through saying that. I don't know at what point that Wait a minute, Horton, Jerry, you don't Horton Homes came in. Apartment. You have to know. Came you in had to change it. You don't need to check with anybody else. You're the head of the department. You did that. I didn't. All right. So who else did it in your office? Nobody. The person who assigned, oh, you're saying that I did it, okay. The person who assigns the addresses in my department, when Horton Homes came in and requested that it be changed, she changed it because I guess she didn't see a problem with it at the time. But when Mr. McDonald came back in and asked that it be changed back to the original, she came and got with me. We looked at the ordinance and what it said about assigning addresses. And I said, yes, originally it was 119. And, and according to the ordinance, it's supposed to be 119 because that's the closest frontage street to the front door of the house. The house does not fit on 119 St. George. You know that better than anybody. Uh, the house space is 1501 Avalon, and if the fire run a fire inside the front door, well, then people who get out the house, they got to jump off the back deck to the concrete driveway or jump out windows. There's no way to get out of the house other than that front door. So, I mean, that does the fact. There's no back door, there's no side door, and anything else. Right now, that house caught on fire, and somebody living it, they got to jump out the windows or they have to jump off the back porch and jump under the concrete. There's nowhere to get out the house. 
Ms. Newman. Um, so these do, they are Harton homes. There's two on St. George and then there's two, I believe on Jeff Davis, correct? Mm -hmm. So we approved the one in front of this one already. First of all, has there been any complaints of that one being short term rental? We heard, we heard. I'm asking Jerry. Okay, we heard at the planning commission meeting that at one time there was a complaint about, uh, I, I guess it was when the rodeo was in town for the uh, mm -hmm. Coliseum that they looked out and they saw a horse out there. Remember, remember that this is conditional use. Had we gotten that complaint in mm -hmm. our department? But you didn't. Then we could have brought it to the They only mentioned it at the planning yeah. commission. We did, we did not receive that complaint. We didn't hear anything about it until, uh, until the planning commission meeting where this was being discussed. Chief yeah. Miller, do you know if there's been any calls into your, you know, any complaints whatsoever? No? I don't know that right now. Okay. Um, but also, so on the other side where there's two more houses on Jefferson Davis, did we or did we not just approve one of those for short-term rentals because y'all wanted them to change the address, correct? Yeah, at, Je at Jeff Davis. I'm talking to Jerry. Well, what that, what that was, that, that address got <laughs> misassigned because it was assigned to the Jeff Davis address when the house was clearly right up on Beach Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And it should have been addressed to Beach Boulevard when it first came in. Uh, we don't assign addresses un unless unless there's some unusual circumstance to it. In that case, the driveway came in off of Jeff Davis, but the house clearly faced uh, Highway 90. In this particular circumstance, and remember that this property in being subdivided had to go through Planning Commission and City Council to get subdivided into two lots. Originally, it was one lot mm -hmm. that went all the way from Rex. Beach Boulevard back to Avalon. Which was my point. This was one parcel. Now they subdivided to build That's these correct. homes. But that's what I'm saying. It's still on the beach, in my opinion. Thank that's you. That's correct, yes. Yeah, but that house sat, the one you changed the address to, sat on Highway 90. This house don't sit on Highway 90. Not close to Highway 90. <laughs> and when they split them in half, they built single-family residence on both of those pieces of property. Nothing else. Single-family residence. Okay, any other comments from any of the council? I'll put a question. Any other comments? To deny. I, let me, I guess. All right, Mr. Deming's contemplating. I think this one's a less difficult for me to, to cope with than the last one. Um, I think it, it sits closer. If we, if we do an overline, overlay district, um, I think we face more issues because more people would be threatened by houses getting short-term rentals you'd look at something and see see just a a broad stroke saying two blocks from the beach or something and everybody's still here um, with problems however this house is is next to other multifamily um developments it's off the beach just north of one that's what well, it's a block off the beach just north of a short-term rental that's on the beach um it, it's really hard to argue that this one would even impact residential neighborhoods that are around it in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I'm going to support this one as well. Okay. Everybody, everybody done? Call for the question. Motion on the floor is to deny. Uh, all in favor? Those opposed? All right. What are four, four, three? Four to three, motion to deny carries. Next item, item F. Resolution granting conditional use approval for short term rental located at 1683 A and B, 1685 and 1687 Irish Hill Drive. I'm going to deny. I'll second it. Motion to deny by Mr. Lawrence, seconded by Mr. Gines. Mr. Lawrence. This here is taking four different pieces of houses and turn them into a short-term rental. We originally said we'd never do more than one house at a time. Now they put 40 on the table at one time. This sits on Harris Hill. It has nothing to do with the beach, nothing to do with downtown Biloxi, nothing to do with tourism at all. This one here is one of the worst ones on the thing today. This is definitely needs to be denied it's just unbelievable that we, this is what Felix was talking about, where they're just going to start on popping up anywhere and say, we're going to do this. We're going to make everything short-term rental. This is not even close to that land use ordinance. 
It does not comply with it. the non-conditional uses. Anything about this property is just totally wrong. And I turn it over to Felix. Yeah, this is um, a, a classic no. It's right up against the railroad tracks, and it's not even close to the beach. So, I mean, the precedence we've already set uh, is in place, and this doesn't come close. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gines. Ms. Newman? I ride down Irish Hill every morning. Irish Hill is literally the worst street when it comes to litter, trash. It's it's horrid. Um, so all I can think of is, you know, short term rentals, they actually put in put effort into these properties, and much more so than these long term. So all I can think of is it might actually improve this area. Thank you, Mr. Deming. You might have a point. I don't know if I can say it as eloquently as Ms. Newman did. But <laughs> um, I, I agree, we, we see neighborhoods built in and around long-term rentals in much worse shape than any of the short-term rentals that we have in our city and that we experience in other cities. Um, Irish Hill is a, is a struggling road, especially when it comes to, to properties and um, the impression that it gives to tourists that travel down that road when 90 or pass road is backed up. I'd support these just because I believe, as Ms. Newman stated, it would probably improve the existing properties around them as they improve themselves. Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Creel, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm thinking four structures on three properties, and uh, I'm concerned about parking. He, he has adequate parking. These are smaller houses. Right, and, and I'm, but I'm thinking short-term rentals. That's the number of uh, bedrooms spaces. So I don't know how many bedrooms they have in those four structures. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Uh, we, uh, we calculated that. I don't have that information, but I do know that he had more parking than what he needed. Um, this was unanimously approved at the Planning Commission. We had no opposition there, and we've had no opposition opposition here today. It's in B zoning, it's conditional use. If he doesn't comply with whatever, then you can withdraw that conditional use. So. I'm just thinking when I drove by and looked at the driveways, there are three that front Irish Hill and there's one slightly behind the others. That's correct, yes sir. And I, Anyway, I just have concerns about the parking, thank you. Mr. Barrett, nothing. nothing. Call for the question. One, one quick comment. Okay, Mr. This Collins. Is, yeah, this is classic of why we need that overlay district. Thank you. That's all I want to Thank say. Thank you, Mr. Gines. Uh, the motion on the table is to deny. All in favor of the motion to deny. Those opposed? Four to three. Motion to deny carries. Uh, need a motion for the consent agenda? No, oh, wait. I'll second. Are we yeah. good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. We've got a, who, mo who made the motion? Who made the motion? All right, Mr. Lawrence made the motion. Mr. Gunn seconded it. What is it? Okay. Mr. Mr. Lawrence, uh, I know we are doing an extension with uh, Golden Nugget. Isn't the Golden Nugget on the uh, agenda today? The lease, yeah. He had talked to us. I mean, what are you actually doing with the? I'm going to ask Peter to do that. I think it, it, it's uh, ready to go. Find Peter. Shane, either one. Do what? Peter's going to come. He can explain. <clears throat> what item is it, George? On the consent agenda, what item? Peter, you need to answer a question on the Golden Nugget uh, <coughs> extension. Yes. This is. Uh a consent from the landlord. They've done some refinancing, I think over the life of the uh, rental term, which is since Isla Capri, we've uh, done these landlord consents probably five or six times. This is the latest version of that since they have a, uh, I think they're doing a refinancing package so they have to re-get the landlord consent. Secretary of State has agreed uh, on behalf of the state and the IHL, and we were comfortable with the language in this. So, do we have an increase? No. No, there's no change to the rent or anything like that. It's just 
Right. It's just basically like when you refinance your, your house, you'd have to get uh, the new bank, would, or the new landlord would just have to agree so to it. They'll have statement to take, percentages. No, nothing changes. It's just a statement that they're current with us. Is that not right? Yeah, no, no effect on any of the. All good. I'm just trying to find out what we have if we get any more money. That's all. We're always, we're always trying that, but, but that may be something we're looking at in the future. All right, uh, on uh, another one, P. We have a bench advertisement with uh, another group. What is the difference here? You got one with CTA, so we got two different bench agreements. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is uh, with CTA. We have the existing bench agreement with uh, Mr. Lechner's group. CTA also has the benches that are, they're the ones that are not the concrete benches. Those have more of the blue, uh, kind of blue metal. And what we do with them is the revenue they receive for those advertising, we calculate that and we offset that against uh, the ask when he comes in and asks for so much a year for his uh, for his budget requirements, we back out the uh, the rent he's receiving. So we just agreed on it, or we changed the rent scale? Yeah, it's basically the same rent as as the existing contract. Okay, that's about it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Gines, you have anything? I have none. Ms. Newman, Mr. Deming. Mr. Tisdale? Yes, on item F, um, it deals with the municipal compliance questionnaire, and I ask this question every year. So you're the only one. There you go. All right. Made a little eye contact there. Yeah. So on the, on the municipal compliance questionnaire, my question is, to the best of your knowledge, this questionnaire has been completed accurately. Correct. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, We've had our comptroller go over some things that we, she had some questions on, so we actually uh, put a little extra attention into it this year. Outstanding. We have a good comptroller, by the way. I want to, I want the world to know that. By the way, uh, slightly off top, well off topic, um, that triggered a thought. The uh, Mississippi Municipal League conducts a biennial salary review of their member cities every other year. And I was wondering who, who completes that for the city? Is that, and I don't know if the comptroller's been here long enough to complete one for this city or who does that? I, I believe just, HR handles that on our behalf. HR, okay, that, that's all. Uh, one other question is uh, item GG. It mentions an emergency repair, Biloxi water tank number one. I was wondering what the nature of that emergency is. If any, usually Mr. Leonard would answer this question. It may be you don't know. Uh, I don't see Mr. Allen out there, but we don't know. We don't know. Okay, I'll run it down later. We Not a, a T-shirt says just call Billy Ray. Okay, <laughs> call B. All right. That concludes my questions. Mr. Thank Barrett, you. I have none. Are there any exceptions? Starting with Mr. Yeah, Lawrence. One next, um, any exceptions? He won. Right. You got another question? They asked the question right first. What are you doing with the Coon Street? Because I might have to vote against that. That's what I'm trying. What, is, what are you doing yeah, we're here? Doing Coon Street. We're trying to get you know get the Tidelands additional money to to redo the you know the the uh, Tidelands project and, and Go Mesa project money to uh, expand the boat launch and expand the parking for the boat launch. Oh, okay, gotcha. So the expansion that we do is for the the, the ramps. Have, you're going to have the ability to launch six boats at one time instead of two. Two additional ones. Six total. Right now we've got four additional. Three. Four. Have two. Three slips, four boats. I mean, four additional boats. Six. So how many total. we have now? We have two, two now, don't we? Two. So we're not expanding that any. Yeah, we're expanding it. So say that again. Going I mean, two, you were going from two, two to, to six. six. Are you approaching the. Two to six. We're not encroaching anybody. Yeah, yeah. You're approaching the Schooner Pier. No, we're not. Yeah, yeah. You're going east, aren't you? Yeah. Right, okay. Well, so how's you're... that encroaching? Yeah, you are. Because you're going How's to it encroaching? Tell me that. Hey, hey you seen a boat? You, you, you can haul all you want. Those schooners come well, in. Well, I respectfully disagree. We're not encroaching on anybody. We've been talking about this for four years. Gentlemen, one at a time. We cannot hear both of y'all speaking. Those schooners come in and out all the time. No, they don't. And so you're going to. Not to that spot. Haul you want. 
those votes have to have room to make those trades, and you are opposing that. So no, I can't support. I, it. I well, don't support it. That's, you know, that's the way. It. Okay. Because you can't keep making mistakes and affecting. This is not things. a mistake. Yes, okay. All right, exceptions, Mr. Lawrence. Yes. What are your exceptions? The one that the mayor hollered about, definitely. All right. On Coon Street. You M. got that? The one the mayor is hollering about. M. M. As in Mike. As in Marine. M. Okay. Is there any others, Mr. Lawrence? Any others? Exceptions? M. Just M. M. Okay. Mike. Mr. Gines? None. Okay. Mr. Tisdale? None. Mr. Barrett? And I had none. With that said, all in favor of the consent agenda? Those opposed? Motion carries with the exception that Mr. Lawrence uh, alluded to. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, code enforcement hearings, we'll go ahead and open those up. First item on the agenda, item A, Bank of New York, Mellon, 321 Heidenham Avenue. This property is still in violation. Okay, what I want to point out about this, but the fenced-in area has cars all in it, and we've received complaints from the neighbors about it. Uh, when our code enforcement officer went out there to take pictures, the owner would not let him take pictures inside the gate, but it is full of cars. Thank you, Director. Is there anyone here to represent Bank of New York Mellon? There being no one, this case is closed. Item B, Reginald Collier, 337 Fayard Street. This property is still in violation. All right. Is there anyone here on behalf of Reginald Collier? That might be. There being none, uh, this case is closed. Item C, Daniel Hanford, 434 Diaz Avenue. This case has been resolved. Okay. Item D, William S. Hinton Estate, 0 Midway Street. This property is still in violation. I'd like to speak on that one real quick. Uh, Pastor Hollins was just here. And uh, if you can give us 30 days, um, and I'll just happen to bring you the pictures. We're, we're fine with that, it, Mr. Gines. Okay. Got a motion? Yeah. Uh, I move it. All right. Moved by Mr. Gines, seconded by Mr. Tisdale. All in favor of the motion to grant 30 days. Motion carries. Next item. Item E, James Stan Lou, 223 Keller Avenue. This property is still in violation. One of the complaints about this house, we have some code violations inside the house, but there are also dogs inside of it. And, uh, no one is living there. Uh, I understand that people come by twice a day to feed and water the dogs, but the uh, neighbors are complaining about that, the overgrowth in the trash. All right. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of James 10 Lou? There being no one, this case is closed. Item F. Sarah Lou, 367 Forest Avenue. This property is still in violation. We voted to uh, demolish the house on this property. There were some uh, a play, piece of playground equipment and a, a small 10 by 10 shed on there that was not covered in the first resolution. So uh, we're bringing this back to get those removed. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of Sarah Lou? There being no one, this case is closed. Can I ask you a question, Jerry? Yes, sir. Are these two related, the two Lou's? That yeah, that's her son, the, yes. the one before. So we had a problem with her all over the city. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, item G, Brenda K. Hart, 2265 Sabrina Drive. This property is still in violation.
Okay, is there anyone here to speak on behalf of Brenda K. Hart? Thank you. Come up, sirs. State your uh, name, your address, and uh, go ahead and speak on. My name is Stan Hart. I live at 251 Eisenhower Drive, apartment 136. I lived in the house for practically nine years after my dad died, and I eventually moved out. We've been trying to evict my sister for six months, and everything you see before there is caused by her. Before she came to the council and promised y'all that it would be cleaned up in a month and the roof would be fixed, she had that place clean, and now it's completely looking like you see it before you today. Uh, she's evicted June 6th. I will personally make sure that the everything's removed as long as we don't get another court order saying that we cannot remove her stuff from the house because we already had a restraining order against her. And basically, the council has come out to evict her June 6th. And she just, my mom actually tried to hire a contractor and got ripped off to replace a roof. The only thing holding me up is my mom also paid $2,500 for another contractor many years ago, and my sister ran them off. As soon as I get my sister off that property, I, I can guarantee you all that will go away. Even her cars, if they will allow me to get rid of them, because she just airs up the tires and they just sit there. How much time would you I can take full responsibility for this. How much time would you need, 30 days or more? It, it would be preferable if I had 60 because I have to obtain some resources as well. Once I get her and the locks change and everybody floating along saying they're going to help over there, um, she, said that, she said that she was going to have some contractors here to represent her, uh, saying that they were going to fix the roof, and obviously y'all haven't heard anything of it. I haven't heard anything of it. Uh, if I could have 60 days, I could have everything fits, including the roof. So 30 days is good enough? 60 would be better. When, it, when, it, when, it, when, is, when, it, when are they going to be out? Uh, June 6th. June 6th. Yes. So that gives us 60 days. 60 days. 60 days. So if we do, okay. I was just going to say 30 days to make sure they get started, and then we'll give you additional 30 days. That, will, that way we can make sure that the work starts. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, that's absolutely oh, So I'm going to move for 30 days. And then we'll see, and then go to another third. Yeah, as soon as soon I can have, as long as they let me, and she doesn't try to sue me or anything like crazy like that, I can have the house cleaned up, like the outside of property, all that stuff off it in like four, three or four days. So thirty days from now, we'll be able to see that yeah. progress is being made, and if yes. it is, yes, sir. then then it'll be appropriate to do a second thirty Absolutely. days. Absolutely. Okay. That's a motion. I'll, I'll move that. For okay. Moved move by Mr. Gollins, thirty days. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Lawrence. Any discussion? All in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Item H, CJ Shaw Brand, 316 Strange Avenue. This property is still in violation. I'm going to move for one more extension. I know the sister was going through 30 days. Yeah, just 30. Okay. She was going through some grieving. Uh, when, when this young lady passed. So I'm going to ask for one more 30 days for her. Thank you, Mr. Gons. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Gons for another extension of 60 days. 30. 30, 30 days. Uh, we, it's been Thank seconded you. by Mr. Lawrence. Any discussion? All in favor? Those opposed? 4 0. Thank you, Director. Uh, we'll move on to the routine agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Move, moved Second. by Mr. Tisdale, seconded by Mr. Gines. Mr. Tisdale? Not a thing. Mr. Gines? None. Mr. Lawrence? Oh. Uh, where the money man at? Come here, we have some nickels. We had $362 on this bill, so you got to have some money this week. Well, we have 540000 which is currently <laughs> been sitting around for about 11 days we should have it in the next by Friday actually by this Friday usually takes 10 to 15 business days to get to us it's been there 11 days so we should have 540,000 then the next tranche of money that we've got coming in is a little bit over 1.5 1.5 million so 540 um, and 1.5 coming yes sir I right, appreciate that thank you all right any other discussion all in favor those opposed 4-0 on the routine agenda. We'll move on to the study agenda. Did a what? 
Study agenda. Study agenda. Oh, study. yeah. Study agenda. Oh. Was that? Make that motion, Good. Is that where everybody Resolution left? requesting the Mayor Legal Department and Director of Community Development to investigate the property located so. at 11811 Old Highway 67 pertaining to Ordinance 2369. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Mr. Lawrence. I mean, Mr. Tisdale, excuse me. No, I just know that there are some issues surrounding this property and the use of the property. I don't have a problem with it at all. Okay, I'll just tell you what this is because we seldom use the study uh, study agenda. This is simply there's an issue uh, sur surrounding a piece of property uh, located on uh, 11811 Old Highway 67. It's now in my ward. Um, it has to do with we approved this originally uh, for a building to be constructed and it's uh, being used for something, it appears to be being used for something different. Just asking um, if we could study this, make sure it's in compliance, make sure uh, it conforms with everything, and if it doesn't, let's move it uh, to a final resolution to make sure it's in compliance with everything that we intended it to be for. Um, any other questions or comments? All in favor of the study agenda? Those opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Chair entertain a motion to uh, recess. That's like. All right, moved by. Our Mr. Tisdale, seconded by Gines. Any discussion? All in favor? <laughs> Motion passes 6 0. We're done. In record time. <laughs>